Welcome back, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, our next speaker uh, is Ms. Donia, uh, who is no, who's no stranger to our health days. Uh, she's given talks on uh, numerous occasions in the past, and her health talk today would be uh, health through nutrition. So I'd like to welcome uh, Ms. Donia. If everybody can give her a round of applause, please. Thank you for the invitation. It's always a pleasure to share nutritional information with all of you. Um, my knowledge came from a lot of medical books, and I've only got to be interested in the topic of nutrition because, like many of you, we really don't look for answers until we get into a health issue, a health challenge, and then we start to look at the options that we have out there. And this is exactly what happened to me. Um, get to age 50 and everything was great and then all of a sudden I'm diagnosed with some serious health issues. Hypothyroidism, ulcers, and the worst was a severe case of eczema where the skin becomes ulcerated and I've had it from up here all the way to the bottom of my feet. So I've tried the traditional method, which is cortisone. I've taken that for 15 years. I've tried the natural methods. I've always been given formulas, herbs, uh, Ayurvedic method, you name it, I've tried it all. And nothing has really worked because the minute I stop these formulas, all the problems come back. So what I'm going to share with you today is something very practical that I learned that you can take home and apply on a daily basis so that you can stay healthy for life. And after trying so many methods, somebody gave me, it was here in the UAE, they gave me uh, an old audio tape and they said, I'm not really into health, you take that audio tape and you listen to that lecture. And in that lecture, I have heard this one sentence that really stood out and made a huge difference in my life and understanding what I can do personally to improve my health. That sentence said that the human body is made from air, we breathe, and it's made from food that we eat, and it's made from water that we drink. That's it, air, food, and water. And if I wanted quality health, that means there should be quality air, quality food, quality water, because these are the things that make up every cell in your body. We need other things. We need love, we need exercise, we need um, the sun. But the main thing that make up your cells are these three elements. So today I'm going to take food only, and I'm going to share with you, by the time you walk out of here, how are you going to determine what is a healthy food or an unhealthy food. So why do we eat? It's not to please our palates. We eat because the body, when we get hungry, is asking for these things from us that comes from food. These are the macronutrients and the micronutrients. That's the reason we eat. Every day, the body is saying, I need my vitamins, my enzymes, all of that has to come from the foods you're eating. And why is that? Because the composition of the body is made from these things. You're mostly water, protein, minerals, carbs, and from the foods you're eating, the body breaks it down and start to create structure, to create energy, and it makes you what you are on a daily basis. It's important that if I wanted healthy cells, and I was desperately looking for healthy cells for my skin, 
It looked like alligator skin 15 years ago. The cells in of, of my skin replicate on a daily basis. So if you want a healthy liver, healthy kidney, healthy heart, whatever the issue is, all of that is going to replicate. So two and a half years later, three years later, you're literally a brand new person, including your bones would replicate every three years. So then the question becomes, if I wanted healthy cells on my skin, what are the tools that the body will use to replicate the cells, whether it becomes a healthy cell or a sick cell? That would be your diet. That would be your food. Now, the foods you're eating has to provide you with what we call essential nutrients. The body cannot make that. It has to come from the foods you're eating. The body takes these nutrients from the food and combine it with the enzymes in the body and create a metabolic process and produce energy, produce vitality, produce health. Your body cannot replicate these nutrients internally, so it has to come from an external source on a daily basis, not monthly, not yearly, every day the body is expecting you to give it these nutrients from the diet you're eating. Now in foods, where the plants, the vegetables, the fruits, where do they get their nutrients? They get it in a natural setting from the soil, from the rocks, from the sea. The sea is full of minerals. And so, through the photosynthesis process, the plants will absorb these nutrients and convert it to what we call organic nutrients, not from an agricultural point of view, but from a chemical point of view. That means if there's calcium in the soil, through the photosynthesis process, the calcium will be absorbed into the fruit or the vegetable, but that calcium in the fruit and vegetable is not the same as the one that was in the soil. Because what the plants will do, they will put a nitrogen bond around that calcium or any other mineral. So when we eat the plant, the body says, I recognize that calcium, I can use it. Because it's a organic calcium with a nitrogen bond. So natural foods are the biggest and the best source to provide us with what we need on a daily basis. There's an interdependency factor between these nutrients in foods. So when you're looking at kiwi, you're looking at orange, everything is included in that food. Even watermelon has protein. So there's, there's a dependency and a synergistic effect between all these nutrients that you find in apples or vegetables and even meats. So I'm not just talking about fruits and vegetables, seeds, nuts, grains, meats. There's a very important synergistic effect. This is why we have to rely on real foods when we're trying to nourish our body and create health and vitality. Your body is like an engine, exactly. So if you think about, you, you're trying to produce this bird cage, so you collect the materials, wood, nails, and so forth, to create the bird cage. Once you're done, there's leftover. You throw them away, the waste, extra nails, and so forth. The body is the same thing. What is the tools it needs on a daily basis to create health and vitality? Food, air, and water. And the products are energy, vitality. This is what it creates with these foods that you eat on a daily basis. And then the waste comes out, urine, and, and so with sweating and so forth. So you have to think of your body as this miraculous engine. God did not create something haphazardly. God created the most amazing human body that knows how to keep you healthy, that knows how to survive. It knows what to do to keep you going on a daily basis. 
And all what it wants from us is the right tools, the quality tools, the best of the best. It's what I call real food. So when you're eating an apple, when you're eating a carrot, these foods give you everything your body needs. But it doesn't have toxins, especially if you choose organic foods. But if you don't have a choice, it still is your best source because it's giving you everything. But let's say you're starting to eat processed foods. So you get up in the morning, you're having cereal that's processed. You're having white bread that's processed. What is it giving you? So the body says, what's, you know, you, you fed me this cereal this morning with a little bit of milk. I'm not getting a lot of the things I need on a daily basis. So I can't function correctly. So there's a huge difference between processed foods and real foods. One is giving you everything you need to create health and vitality, and the other stuff is not. So let me give you a couple of examples. For example, I like chili. So I go to the store. I have two options. I could choose the chili. These are all bought here. I didn't bring them with me. So you always have choices. I could choose the chili that doesn't have preservatives and additives, and I could choose this one. And what does it have in it? Potassium sorbate, sodium, I can't even pronounce these chemical names, but it's written next to it, preservatives. So you say, so what? I'm just taking a little bit of that to make my food taste good. It matters because these things don't leave your body. It has an accumulative effect. So years go by, then you end up with a health challenge, and it has a lot to do with the little tiny things that you're introducing to your body. They are chemicals. The body doesn't recognize them. So the body can do several things. If it's easy to get it out in your urine every day, great, it will do that. If it's not easy, it would store it. So it's almost like dropping a drop of poison in your body every day. Take soy sauce. You have two choices. I would call this one a real food. I would put it on the category of a real food because when I look at the ingredients, there's no preservatives. It's just pure soy, fermented soy with water and salt. Now look at this ingredient. This is the most that people buy. So look at the ingredients. Like I said, I can't read most of it. Sodium benzoate, sodium acetate, and there's six more, plus the soy. So if you're cooking, even the things in bottles and cans and packaged, Yes, it's better to stay away from them, but if you can't, choose the right real food product. The same with ketchup, the same with juices that you buy in cans or containers to drink. This was given to me today. So the first thing I read was what's in it. Yes, it says natural, it has coconut, water, and it's pulp. Sounds really healthy, right? But when you look in the back, there's a few preservatives in it. So to stay healthy for life, you need to be eating a lot of real foods and be an aware and an educated consumer. Look at the label, look at the ingredients, and make the right choice. One of the most important food in, in, in that we use every day whether you cook at home or you go to a restaurant, are oils. So I want you to look at the process of what they do to oils today from the time the seeds is created by, by nature to the time they produce the oil that you use for cooking. Canola oil, corn oil, vegetable oil. It's amazing. They deodorize it, they create the process, like you're creating plastic 
um, bleaching. By the time the oil is ready for shipping, it's no longer a food. This is what I call Frankenstein food. Okay? And what do we do? We cook with it every day. Why do you think heart diseases are way up today? Because of these uh, types of processed foods. So what happens if we go to a restaurant? We have no control, right? Well, when I go to a restaurant, the first thing I tell them, I'm allergic to all oils. Of course, it's a lie. But if I tell the waiter or waitress that, they're scared and they will not sneak in any oil in my food. So I walk in and say, I'm allergic to oils. What can you offer me that doesn't have oils? So I, I get grilled fish. I get some vegetables. Um, so I'm eating, I'm enjoying my social life, but I'm really aware of this big evil here. Now look at what happens with cold pressed process of an oil. Very simple. You take the seed, you press it, you create the oil, and you sell it to the public. Now that's real food. So you have choices. You can choose a real oil to work with, and the old-fashioned ghee, and the French call it clear butter, is very healthy to cook with. What happened in the last 20, 30 years is they completely stopped the use of these healthy oils and went to hydrogenated oils. Now, ghee does not burn at high temperature, so I really like to use it for cooking. The same with coconut oil. Um, so, again, one is a real food. It will not cause you health problems. And the other types of foods, it's, a, it's think about it like dropping some poison in your body on a daily basis. You want to avoid it. Now, I, I don't know if all of you got this form. Did they pass it on to you? OK, so I, I gave instructions that, that everybody gets this. So what you want to do with this, when you go home, take an inventory of what you've got in your cupboards, in your kitchen, and see the percentage how much real foods are you eating? And how much processed foods are you eating? And you want the majority of what you eat on a daily basis to be real foods. That is what's going to create health and vitality. Thank you very much for allowing me this opportunity to share this very simple guide that will get you health and vitality.